Hello and welcome to a video Starting off the news this week, a study published in the journal Biology Letters has detailed the discovery of a case of facultative parthenogenesis in a crocodile for the first time. This means that the crocodile, a female, has formed a fetus without being impregnated by a male, a phenomenon also seen in some birds, fish and a number of other reptiles. Reports of this have been growing quite rapidly over the last couple of decades, especially amongst those found in snakes. This is likely due to the increase in snakes being kept as pets, which would also go away to explain why this hasn't yet been reported in crocodilians, which are not quite as common a pet as a snake. Questions are now rising again about just how common this is, and what other species may be hiding this occurrence. In this case, the fetus produced was 99.9% .9 genetically similar to its mother, a crocodile living at a zoo in Costa Rica. The birth was a stillborn but fully formed, as has been seen in other species before. This happened at the beginning of 2018, and the paper was released this week. A researcher has said that, while this is the first case of this in a crocodilian, it isn't a surprising discovery given the increase in reports of parthenogenesis over this recent time period. And in other news, a study published in the journal Nature has looked at chemical signatures from a pair instability supernova and found direct evidence for massive stars being formed in the early universe. These massive stars, potentially over 250 times the mass of our own sun, would have become pair instability supernovae and this event would have left a unique chemical signature that, before now, had not yet been observed. Now though, from a star in the galactic halo comes the evidence astronomers were looking for, with one calling it a holy grail of astronomical discoveries. A very exciting and impactful step in the understanding of how our universe came to be. And now over to Ben, who has brought news. Thanks Doug. First up in the paleo news for this week is a really interesting new study that has performed the first radioactive dating of the Nemect formation. The Nemect formation of the Gobi Desert in Mongolia was home to all sorts of well-known dinosaur species, including Tarbosaurus, Therizinosaurus, Dinochirus, Mononychus, and others. And previously, relative dating techniques had estimated an age for the formation of late Campanian to Maastrichtian, meaning these animals were thought to have lived around 75 to about 70 million years ago during the Cretaceous period. However, this new study uses a combination of uranium-lead isotope dating, trace element analysis, and Y-screening analysis on five Tarbosaurus teeth collected from the formation, finding that an age of 66.7 million years is actually the lower limit of the age of fossilization for these samples, plus or minus 2.5 million years. This age therefore supports the dating of the formation as during the Maastrichtian stage of the Cretaceous, but seemingly younger than previous estimates. This therefore means that the Nemect animals were living at the same time as North American animals such as T. rex, and would have been around right at the end of the Mesozoic when the asteroid impact occurred, potentially witnessing this catastrophic event. This is a very intriguing new study that shows the usefulness of these radioactive dating techniques, and also reveals fascinating new insight into the timings of evolution of different dinosaur groups. Also in the news for this week, there's been another Spinosaur discovered. It's getting hard to keep up with these now. This discovery has been made in the UK, and actually it's not that new. It's based on material collected and donated to a museum during the early 20th century. The specimen in question is only a single tooth, however it provides a surprising amount of information. The tooth is clearly from a Spinosaurid, but the authors compare its characteristics to those of Baryonyx, showing that it can't be from this dinosaur. Additionally, the tooth likely came from an exposure of the Wealdon supergroup, the lower Cretaceous sequence of rock exposed in the UK from which Baryonyx and other Spinosaurs have been recovered, that dates to earlier on than those other Spinosaurids. All this evidence is used to show that there are likely several other Spinosaur taxa in the Wealdon that are yet to be discovered and named, and showing that the diversity of these dinosaurs in the UK is likely a lot higher than what we previously thought. A really interesting study there, it's exciting to think about the future Spinosaur discoveries that will be made here in the UK. Finally for this week, there's a new genus and species of theropod dinosaur named from China. Called Mygmanikion liang, the fossils of this new species comprise a partial left forelimb with a complete hand, preserved in the rock as a slab and a counterslab. 
characteristics of its hand show that it is definitely a member of the Maniraptorans, the derived group of theropods including birds, dromaeosaurs, therizinosaurs, and others. But beyond this, its relationships to other dinosaurs are unclear. The hand anatomy of this animal does show some similarities to Therizinosauroids, the basal Therizinosaur Fukui venator, and Oviraptorosaurs, but more material is needed to properly figure out how it is related to these other groups. Well, that's it for the paleontology news this week. I hope you enjoyed learning about these fantastic discoveries. Back to Doug in the studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for this week's Seven Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed, and we'll see you on Sunday.